What's up, everybody? Welcome to the rally. Brooke Fletcher here alongside Joshua Perry, and we have Pete Blackburn hanging out with us in studio. He's our NHL insider, and he's the host, or one of the hosts, of What Chaos. It's a great podcast. You should take a listen. He talks pucks and more. Uh, Pete, what's up? What's up? Happy to be back. We appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. You guys interrupted a very interesting conversation before uh, we came on air here about dogs. Uh, next week is National what, Pet Day? Is that what we saw? And Joshua has his thoughts on, on dogs here. I feel like you're trying to get me canceled right now. No, which I no, no, no. Got a bunch of dog haters. I, I'm here. not a, I'm I not have a no dog idea fan. How that's if you want to have a dog, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to have a dog. Don't try to talk me into having a dog, and certainly don't try to force your dog upon me. That's that's all I'm <laughs> I'm here for. I've heard this story a million times, and then somebody gets a dog, and they regret the years of their life that they wasted with. I, I always told Joshua with a dog this. I was like, in I, the house, I, it was not for me. What are you going to do when your son, like five years from now, and he's like, Daddy, I want a dog. I'll be like, you can get one when you're an adult and you pay your own bills. Okay. We'll Mr. see about Fun that. We will see about that. We have this on video. <laughs> We're going to clip this off. I can't wait. Okay, let's get to uh, some NBA news because we got to touch base. What's going on across the association? How about Victor Wembanyama? He had himself a night with a historic triple-double, becoming the second youngest player in NBA history to record 10 block shots. So Shams Sharania, he joins us now for more on this. Shams, good to see you. Now, when he entered the league, listen, we knew that he could rewrite record books, but did we know that his impact would happen this quickly? I think we knew from a from a position of talent that Victor Wembanyama was capable of a lot, but when you look at his numbers, he's doing it in such low minute totals. I mean, over the last really month, month and a half, he's been playing on a minutes restriction, hasn't been playing back to backs until just recently again. And when I saw what he did last night, the stat line that he had, the thought that I had was that it's only a matter of time before Victor Wembanyama has a quadruple double. There's Four players that are tied with the all-time mark with one quadruple triple double that include, includes Hakeem Olajuwon and David Robinson. But it's it's very possible Victor Wembanyama could be the type of player that sets the mark for that quadruple double uh, record uh, in in league history. Just the way he's able to impact the game, points, rebounds, blocks, assists. He's able to do everything. He said it, and I've heard it. He can really play point guard on, on many nights for the Spurs team. He can play one through five. That's what makes him so special. Yeah, it's, it's rare that you see a, uh, a young guy come into the NBA and play the way that he has just from a command of the game standpoint. And Shams just mentioned all the things that he can do in terms of scoring, and we've seen that. And his ability to handle the basketball, to facilitate uh, with his teammates, to grab rebounds. But... 10 blocks in a game is ridiculous. And, and I think a lot of people look at a dude with a slender frame and they're like, oh, you know, can't play defense, going to get pushed around the paint. And he's like, no, I'm going to dedicate myself to, to being able to be a guy who can be a rim protector when necessary and to really disrupt what the other team's trying to do. I love this. And when you start to, to look at him versus uh, other guys who are kind of in that category of young stars, he just looks different. Like, it's rare that you get to see a guy of his size go out there and look so fluid and just look so natural on the basketball court. Yeah, I haven't been able to follow the NBA super closely this year, but I'm surprised that he doesn't get 10 blocks every game. Just based <laughs> off of the, the pictures that I look at of Victor Wembe Yama. You said he looks different from other rookies. He literally looks different from other rookies. Look, <laughs> looks different from every other player. It looks like Photoshop when he's out there. He's that big. So the fact that this is his rookie year and he's doing this kind of stuff makes me very excited to see the player he becomes once once his game develops into like a veteran mentality and maybe add some size too. You know, we're talking about just the instant impact that, you know, everybody says he's a generational talent. We don't, we haven't seen a guy like him um, in years as far as Victor Wembanyama. But, you know, you, you mentioned you don't follow NBA closely, but mm -hmm. Connor Bedard, talk about yep. generational talent. How have you just kind of seen the similarities between these two as far as impact? Well, I don't know. I'm not ready to say Connor Bedard's a generational talent. Is he on the road to get there? Perhaps. I, I, he's got one of the best shots in the NHL already, and you, we've seen what he's been able to do in a rookie year where he's not surrounded by much talent and I think that's that's probably the same for Victor Wembanyama in uh, in San Antonio like you, you're stand out on a team in which there's not a ton of talent for Connor Bedard to, to do it like he's still injured he's been injured for weeks now and last night was the first time that he'd been caught in rookie points because Brock Faber had two assists last night finally caught him in rookie points that's how much better Connor Bedard has been than every other rookie in the year they just make it look easy yeah. right it's been so much fun to watch these young stars uh, in both of these leagues